she is having a hard time uh, getting her flexion back. She is at this point six weeks out of surgery of her ACL, bone patella, bone, tendon graft. She is at 85 degrees of flexion. So this is the exercise we're going to do to try to help promote uh, hamstring strength as well as um, range of motion for her knee. We call these donkey kicks, okay? <laughs> Kick up hard, there you go. Pull. Okay, we're going to add some resistive stuff for her hamstrings, but we're also going to be adding passive motion, helping her into knee flexion with this exercise as well. She will do the same thing. However, you can see it'll be resistive for her hamstring, but after she pulls through, she's going to have a passive force to help her gain her flexion back. So pull, that's active, and then that's passive. Pull, so it's passively pulling her up into flexion. It's also a resistive force for her hip flexors. Pull up hard, touch your rear end. Kick out straight. Kick out straight before you pull down. Pull. There you go. Pull hard. Good. Pull. Good. We're going to do standing leg extension to work on her glutes and her hamstrings. And at the same time, she's having a little bit of trouble getting her uh, passive extension back at six weeks out. So it's going to be passively helping her extension, but actively uh, resisting her hamstrings and her glutes. Try to come all the way up. Don't tilt your body forward, keep them straight up and down. Pull hard, pull. Pull. And again, so you have passive extension of her knee, but you have active hamstring and glute contraction. And let's just do your squats. Keep your body straight up and down. All the way down in the knee flexion again, six weeks out, having a hard time getting her knee flexion back. Keep your heels on the floor. Don't let them come up. If their heels come off the floor, then they're going to be cheating, they're going to be substituting, and they're not going to be promoting their knee flexion. Toes straight ahead, shoulder width apart. At six weeks out, we want her to learn this motion right here because when she begins to jump again, she is going to want to come down into a valgus knee flexion. We've got to teach her to keep her knee over her toe and to lower herself down slowly once we get her back on land. We want to teach her a lateral step up in the pool. This is a very common exercise that we do out on land or in the clinic. So we want to make sure that she lowers herself down, keeping her waist completely level and her knee comes straight over her toe. Keep your knee straight over your toe. Don't lower your hip down. And of course we use the biofeedback is going to be the monitors and the cameras in the pool. From there, just walk up. Okay, now instead of going down to the side, you can go down to the front. Okay, same thing. This particular exercise, we gotta keep the weight back on the heel. Don't let the weight transfer to your toes. If it transfers to their toes, they're going to be using their calf muscles. We do not want that. We want to start working their, their quads eccentrically. So we want to make sure that her weight stays back on her heel and she's getting good knee flexion and her hip is staying level. We want to train our athletes exactly the way that they play on the field. Sports specific rehabilitation. And that's what this pool allows us to do. She is a goalkeeper. She's got to be able to catch, she's got to be able to have good balance on her legs, and she's got to be able to, to react suddenly. So I want to train her, her, her legs to have proprioception. First things you lose when you tear your ACL is proprioception. So we've got to get that back. So we got the resistance of the, the water trying to blow against her. That's trying to knock her off balance. Then we got the ball too. Total body. 
Total body workout. Come on, hit me in the chest with it. Hit me hard one time. There you go, hit me in the chest. Good. We turn each direction. Slightly bend at the knee. Got the jets blowing against her, trying to knock her off. Same thing here. Again, she's six weeks out. Standing on one leg. Good, last one. We can go from there right into seven or eight weeks out. She's gotten better flexion. Try to stay on you. Try to stay on your feet. There you go. Just like you're playing ball. You got to make sure that they're they're keeping keeping their foot planted. You don't want them just completely floating. You want to try to make sure that their legs are in the water or in the exact same position that they are when they're on the land, going through the same motion. Okay, so she's going against the resistance. Back pedaling. Push, push, push. One of the best things you can do to stimulate the quadriceps is to back pedal. A lot of people that don't have the pool will do this on a treadmill with a treadmill incline. You don't have to have an incline to stimulate those quads. As long as you got a resistance, you're going to stimulate the quads. So walking backwards against the resistance and against the speed of the treadmill is stimulating her quads. And that's exactly what she needs from six weeks out to nine weeks out. Is make sure those quads are firing each time she comes in. Okay, now the other side. We are eight to ten weeks out. She's got her flexion pretty good. It's coming back. She's got good quad stability. Now we're going to start working on some plyometric stuff so that hopefully by 12 weeks out she's on land doing plyometric stuff, doing everything we're doing in the pool at this point. All right, we're going to start bounding. She's going to alternate legs. Very important that she watches herself in the camera because we want to make sure when she lands, her knee stays straight over her toe. Both legs are doing it. Good. Right before, you, right before you explode off, you're leaning back a little bit. Make sure you stay forward. Don't, don't sit down. There you go. Yeah. Number one reason girls tear their ACLs is because when they land after a jump, they come down into valgus motion. So now is the time to teach her, eight to ten weeks out. We got to teach her when she lands, keep her knee straight over her toe. Good. Turn the other way. You're doing good. So we're working on hip stability as well as, well as quadriceps stability, proprioception, and a little bit of strength. So she's got the resistance of the water, and I wish I knew what this thing was called. This is a very tough exercise. Very good for hip stability and uh, proprioception. The key is swinging the contralateral leg, the non-involved leg, by the step while her bad leg is having to stabilize her. Make sure you pick your knees up good. Okay, so we usually run each time she gets in. At eight to 10 weeks out, we go ahead and let her start running. If they've got good quad control, not a whole lot of joint effusion, they've got their range of motion back, then we let them start running in the pool, not on land. What's wonderful about this is the fact that instead of waiting to 13 weeks out and the, and the athlete has completely forgotten how to run, they're only eight weeks, seven to eight weeks out 
and you can go ahead and let them start the running motion and so they're that much more uh, they're that much faster in learning to run again all right now drift back this is a different one and then sprint into it okay to the front and then slowly going back try to walk, try to run normal even if you're not going as fast as you think don't tow out good motion good running form pump your arms too that's it try to make it as natural as possible a lot of times if you just tell your athlete to sprint into it then they're going to get there as fast as they can and their, their pattern is going to be totally off. So you want to make sure it's not how fast they go into the current, it's, it's making sure they're running with a good gait, good pattern. That's better. Good. Do it one more time, make it look just like that. We've got to get some change of direction for her. Plant and go. That's it. Good. Now straight back. Remember, keep good, good motion. Don't worry about how fast you're going. Good running technique. Don't worry about how fast. Good technique. Don't lean so far forward. Keep your body straight up. Can't lean forward on land. There you go. Good. All right. Straight back. Good motion, good motion. Don't worry about the speed. A slow dynamic stretch because of the tubing. She just pulls up. We use this because we initiated it because she was having such a hard time getting her flexion back. We started this day one that, that, that she started coming here with only 85 degrees. And this in conjunction with the pool work she believes is probably is what is responsible for getting her knee flexion back. At, six, at five weeks out, the athlete should have about 120 degrees of range of motion. She had 85 degrees, and within three weeks of doing this with the pool, she was at 135. So she's controlling exactly how much uh, stretch she's putting on her knees, so we don't have to worry about inflicting pain on her ourselves every time. We keep our pool at about 105 degrees. After she holds each one for about two to three minutes, she'll rest, stretch her leg out, go back, do it again. You want to make sure that she keeps her body in a straight line, that she's not bent too much at the hip. or her, her, You don't want too much hip extension here. You want to make sure she's isolating her knee to make sure she's getting a good quad stretch along with a good uh, passive stretch at her knee. We had a combination of things that really improved her dramatically. We used the plunge pool at 105 degrees to do the dynamic stretching for 15 minutes. Then we went over and did active exercises in the HydroWorks 2000 against the water resistance, against the treadmill moving. We did a lot of uh, bounding, um, uh, jumping inside the pools. We did a um, jogging. Um, and we also did a lot of stationary exercises with lateral step ups, uh, stuff that you would normally do on land inside the pool to not only take weight bearing forces off the knee, but to alleviate um, uh, a little bit of the pain and stiffness just with the warmness uh, of the water. Um, and the, 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 uh, just the feedback uh, and the decreasing of sensation and so forth just by having water touching the leg. We did that um, for about two weeks. We objectively measured her with a goniometer after every time that she got out of the pool for knee flexion and extension. And she went from 85, de uh, 85 degrees uh, at six weeks post-op 
to 135 degrees at eight weeks post-op. A huge improvement. I think it was mostly important because it gave us a, a tool that we could use that would not only provide a, a source for her to exercise and to gain her motion back, but it provides a, a, a piece of equipment that allows us to treat her sport specifically to her position in soccer and at the same time the warmness of the water the non weight bearing forces is exactly what she needed to get her over the hump and w without that we would have been forced to do a lot of manual pushing and pulling on that knee we would have been forced to be delayed into teaching her how to run again and so you're looking at someone who without that pull that comes in with decreased range of motion you can't work her strength you can't work her sport specific activities until 12 to 13 weeks out so you're looking at a return to play of about two to three months longer than if we had the pool which we did so she is right back on pace to returning to soccer at four months out of her ACL surgery I had to have something to completely change the environment, provide this young lady with feedback, and also have a modality that would, for certain, decrease her pain while we rehabbed her. And the pool, the HydroWorks 2000, does all of that. It provides the warmth, it provides the feedback through the cameras and the monitors, and it provides her a modality that she can get in and Although she's not back doing the same activities, she can go through the motions, and so therefore, mentally, it, it, sh it showed her the, the light at the end of the tunnel, that she can do those movements. Without that, then you're stuck doing none of those movements until 13 or 14 weeks after surgery.